Hi, I'm Leslie Anderson, and I am a psychologist at the UCSD Eating Disorder Center. And I'm Ann Cusack, also a psychologist at the Eating Disorder Center. Today, we're going to focus on distress tolerance, specifically the skill of accepts, which means distract. So these are skills to distract yourself um, when you're in distress. And I think we're all in a little bit of distress right now. Every single one of them. Well, if anyone isn't in distress, then they're just weird, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so we're going to be using the DBT skills manual. Hopefully you have it or are familiar with it. And we're going to be talking about some distress tolerance skills today. It might be helpful for you to go ahead and get out a pen and a paper so that you can jot down any of the skills or suggestions that might make dealing with this COVID-19 crisis a little more doable for you. Um, so like uh, Leslie said, we're going to be talking about the skill of distract. And for those of you that have done any DBT before, um, Marshall Linehan and DBT loves acronyms. And so there is also a um, acronym for distract. So the way that we remember it is that wise mind accepts. And so we're going to go through the A-C-C-E-P-T-S of accepts. Um, so the first one is distracting with activities. Um, I think this is actually the perfect thing to do during a global pandemic, although a lot of your normal activities may be things that you cannot do right now, unfortunately. Um, and so it might have to be brainstorming some new activities. So things like focusing your attention on a task or a job or a cleaning project at home that you maybe have been putting off and now you suddenly find yourself with the time to do it. Really throwing all of your attention into that activity can take your mind off of everything that's going on in the world. And you know, if you're familiar with this sheet, then you know that some of the things on here aren't really possible to do. It's pretty hard to go out to have a meal at a restaurant or go out with a friend right now. But rent movies and watch TV, I hope that you all have a list of TV shows and movies that you're catching up on, on at home. This is the perfect time to binge watch net Netflix. Lots of things like playing cards, playing games, downloading music. Um, I know my nephew personally made a quarantine playlist and it's totally poppin'. So things like that are great activities. What kind of stuff is on the quarantine oh, playlist? Oh, everything like um, don't stand so close, <laughs> um, stay at home, all yes, kinds of all songs. Oh yeah, all kinds of songs. It's like amazing and hilarious. Pretty much anything that means like get away from me. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. It's on the playlist. <laughs> exactly. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's some other ones on here on the list and you know, you got to pick the ones that are fun for you or that are going to distract you from what's going on. So playing cards is on here. If you don't have anyone who's living with you, no roommates to play cards with, you can always do an online card game. Spending time with children is on here. This is kind of a mixed one for those of us who have kids. <laughs> Um, but for those of you who have furry children, very helpful. Very My helpful. dog has truly never been happier. She's like mom is home at all times. So that's activities. And, um, you know, I personally like to write these things down, have a list, because when I have a lot of free unstructured time on my hands, I feel like it's really easy to complete one thing and then say, I don't know what I want to do next. And I can't think of anything to do next. So I love just having a list of things to like go back to, or even you could do slips of paper in a jar and pick out an activity to do. I think that one's especially good to do with kids. So next up on the list is contributing. So remember, we're working our way through this acronym of accepts, and then C on here is contributing. It's doing something nice for someone else. And this could be, again, a little bit harder in this time when we're supposed to be not spending time with people. Uh, but I think there's a lot of new opportunities of ways to contribute. So okay. asking, you know, any elderly people around you if they need anything, if they need you to pick pick up something for them at the grocery store. Maybe like sewing some masks, whether for it's for yourself, your family, or to donate to a local hospital, mm -hmm. donating to a charity, um, trying to even do something nice for someone in your house. So maybe your roommate or your parent has been asking you for a hundred years to paint that wall in the garage and you just haven't done it. Well, now might be a really good time to contribute and surprise them. Um, and it could be something really simple, right? Just sending a text message to a friend and saying, how are you? I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Um, checking in on family members, that kind of thing. Everyone is struggling right now. So um, that increased connection and checking in on people can be really important. And the great thing about contributing is that if you are actively doing something that makes someone else's life a little bit better, it can really distract from your own um, sadness or anxiety or fear that you might be feeling during this time. The one caveat on there for those of you that are following along on the handout is don't give someone a hug right now. 
that is not one that we're going to recommend to contribute. <laughs> that will not make anyone feel better. <laughs> Um, the next one is with comparisons. Um, this is a uh, component of distracting with activities, or, that, or sorry, this is a component of distracting with um, wise mind accepts that can be a little bit tricky because especially within um, eating disorder recovery, comparisons can be something that's really challenging, right? Like we're not asking you to compare yourself in terms of body image or anything of that nature, but just really comparing how you're feeling in this moment of crisis during this um, global pandemic to maybe how you felt differently um, at other times in your life, reminding yourself that you will not feel this way forever, comparing this moment to moments when you felt much differently and felt much better. Um, and you know, part of the um, idea for comparison is to compare yourself to those less fortunate. And this one I think always makes people feel a little weird because it's not like you want to find someone who's doing poorly and then be like, haha, I'm doing better. But honestly, that's been helpful for me in feeling grateful for certain things. Mm -hmm. So kind of for me, it's been helpful to remind myself that like, hey, at least I have a house to self-isolate in mm -hmm. and yeah. I have a little bit of a yard so I can go outside and get fresh air. And, um, you know, regardless of your situation, I bet that there are people who um, are having a harder time or are dealing with more. And so sometimes it can just be helpful to remind yourself of what you have to be grateful for in a situation. Absolutely. So the next one on the list is to distract yourself with different emotions. And so the idea is to, you know, sometimes when you feel a negative or unwanted emotion, the urge is to do something that will kind of allow you to just I don't know, revel in the emotion. It's That's like weird. It's like to listening it. to Adele when you're sad. Like I'm really gonna like sink into this like music that makes me cry. I used to like really do this. Like I have a very vivid memory of being in high school and this is gonna I think we all did in high school. But you probably didn't have a tape cassette in high school. No. So I had a tape cassette and when I went through a breakup, I <laughs> found like the saddest song I could think of, which I shouldn't admit, but it was by Aerosmith. It's called What It Takes. And um, I went through this herself. breakup and I would listen to this really sad song about how, you know, love is pointless and, you know, it's never going to work out. And I would listen to it on repeat. And the, the sad thing is that on a tape recorder, you have to like literally rewind it each time to listen to it on repeat. So there's time for you to be like, wait, why am I doing this again? But I, I didn't I don't think I had that insight okay. in high school. But we want you to have that insight. And actually, instead of picking something that's going to make your unwanted emotion worse, pick something that's going to distract you from your unwanted emotion. So it doesn't really matter what the emotion is as long as it's completely different from the one that you're feeling. I think one of the ways that I really like to do this is like horror movies or like scary, scary movies. No. Um, one of the things that's been happening during the pandemic is that movies that were supposed to be released in the theater that you might have been really looking forward to are coming straight to any kind of like Amazon, Apple TV, whatever you have. And so the other night I actually watched Invisible Man, which is a movie I wanted to see in the theater, and it was terrifying, and it was a really nice, like, two-hour distraction from the worries about everything that were going on in the world, because I couldn't think about feeling sad and scared while I was actually terrified of this Invisible Man movie. And if you're not a horror movie buff, then you can always pick up, say, a comedy and just get completely yeah, distracted works, in the ridiculousness of a funny movie. I personally love anything that involves one of the ladies from Saturday Night Live or several of the ladies from Saturday Night Live. The more the better. The more the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the next one is with uh, pushing away. So um, this is basically not letting yourself go down the rabbity rabbit hole of all of the things and the thoughts that are really making you feel overwhelmed in this time of crisis. So it's sort of like leaving mentally the situation for a while. You can, you're almost like kind of even denying temporarily that this is a problem. Like, no, nope, this isn't happening for me. I'm just gardening right now because I want to be gardening right now, not because I can't leave my house. So just really like temporarily stepping outside of the thoughts that you're having that might be making this worse and just saying like, I'm going to deal with these later. And I know one thing I have an urge to do is read all of the news and all of the scary statistics and all of the terrible stuff that's happening. And that's not pushing away, right? Mm -hmm. Pushing away is putting your news feed down mm -hmm. and doing something that has nothing to do with the pandemic. I like literally pushed away my news notifications. I used to have like mm. news notifications going all day on my phone and now I don't have any. So that way I can be um, more aware and mindful of when I'm taking in news and when I'm not. 
sometimes it's just not effective to read every single detail of the news. No. The next one on here is to use other thoughts to distract yourself. So um, in the manual, it says to count to 10, which is not that distracting for me. Like I feel like I can count to 10 and think about all sorts of things at the same time but you could try counting to a hundred in multiples of seven or something like that. My favorite one with this is if you are someone who speaks more than one language or multiple languages, try alternating languages. So for example, count like one in English, two in Spanish, three in French, four in English. And I promise it will totally be um, an effective distraction because it's very challenging and it will be hard for you to think about anything else. And uh, it's funny because with the other thoughts, one of the things on here is to work a puzzle. And so I actually got a really big jigsaw puzzle thinking that my kids would be amused and distracted by that for a while during this stay at home order. And the only thing that happened is that I became completely obsessed with the puzzle. My kids weren't into it at all, but I became just single mindedly focused on needing to solve this 500 piece puzzle. And it was actually a lot more I would say effective and better for me emotionally to work on that puzzle than to sit there and do nothing or sit there and um, worry and obsess about what's going on in the world. And then the last one is distracting with other sensations. Um, so this is exactly what it sounds like. This is doing something like um, taking a really hot shower or a really cold shower or squeezing sort of a squeezy ball in your hand or um, potentially putting some like ice in your mouth or something of that nature just to really kind of like take your mind off of sort of the um like all of it like yeah all like take your stuff. mind off all of it mm -hmm. because I don't know if you guys have ever had that sensation of like oh this is so cold and suddenly your mind goes blank like mine just did um <laughs> that actually will be a really good distraction and then maybe you might not jump back into those same um distressing thoughts with the same amount of intensity yeah this might be a way to kind of wrench yourself out of that you know feeling of I don't know what to do right now or like sometimes I sort of get sucked into my couch and I feel like I have a hard time motivating to do something um, so I think something like this, a strong other sensation, taking yeah. a shower, um, taking a really hot shower, that might be a way to kind of push yourself into the next activity. Absolutely. So those are the distract skills, AKA the accept skills, most unsatisfying wrong acronym that there is, <laughs> uh, but they're super helpful. And I hope that, um, that for those of you who are at home right now, that you've gotten some ideas from this video of things that you can do to keep yourself busy and distracted during this really tough time. And we will have more skills coming your way very soon.